tell us a bit about how he got there, what took him to Buddhism, and finally to be brave enough to want to ordain. And Ian, related to it, asks Nagasena, did you ever have doubt about going forth, maybe thinking you wouldn't last long? Hmm. Well, how I got here is easy enough. Kind of. Took the plane, taxi here. But I think, uh. I don't know, I mean. It was a long time coming, pretty much, I think. I've always had a bit of an inclination towards it, I guess. Since I was young, I got into uh, spiritual things and religions and looking at different things and mainly Hinduism and Sufism, both of which have uh, ascetics. And I was always like, oh, that would be uh, the best, the best thing to do. Just because to me, I always saw the, uh, well, when you stay in the world, it's just, you just do the same thing that everyone does. You go to school so you get a job. You get the job so that way you can live. So you get married, so you get this, get that, and then you just get old, and then you die. And none of it really matters. You can't, you can't do anything with it if you're going to die. You just hold in, have fun with it for that little bit of time, so then it just becomes meaningless. There's nothing really to it. So it was always something that I was wanting to do, I guess. And then I got here, did the meditation courses. And yeah, there's doubt a lot of times. There's, during the meditation courses, there's everything. It's like a life in a shot glass. You get a, you get big ups, big downs, and everywhere in between, and all this. So, yeah, there's, there's moments of incredible inspiration where I was just, this is, this is the only thing, and then two hours later I'd just be thinking, how I, how can I get out of here? Well, what can I do to leave? All this, so. Yeah, but in the end it was just a matter of really having to look, look at it in the face, I guess, and just be like, well, there's all these various things happening in my mind. I want to do this, I want to do that. But you know that I came all the way out here to Sri Lanka for this purpose because of the way things were and me following these wants and all this. And they make they make a good argument when you're in a tough situation. But when you just look at it and it's like uh it's like the thinking question again. It's just when you look at it as just thoughts, as just wanting, it kind of it loses its punch. It's just you give it its importance. If you find this or that important, it's because you're you're making it important. There's nothing important about wanting this or wanting that. All your wants and cravings, there's there's nothing of value in them. It's just that you convince yourself that there is because that's the way the mind works. So you just, it's really a matter of letting go, I think. You just kind of have to, you just kind of have to do what you know is right. And then it works out. Uh, you didn't have other Buddhist teachers before you took the courses there? Mm, no. But, um, yeah, I don't know. You just have to, uh, do what you know is right without getting caught up in all the stories that you'll come up with. Because that's all that it is, is stories. 
is that you just create everything. This means this, and it has this importance, and it's related to that in this way, and it's all just stories that you make up, and it really doesn't matter. You just have to see that. And then it becomes easy, then it's not so much a big thing anymore. Then you just have to uh, memorize, memorize the procedure. Um, sorry to take the mic away from you, but just to continue on with that, um, he's not telling you the actual story of how it happened. When he finished the 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 advanced course, no, and, and we were all sitting, we were all sitting down around down here trying to decide what to do. Should we should we ordain him tomorrow, or should we wait a week? And it was debatable because if we set it for tomorrow, then or sun or whatever, whenever it was, then uh, what happens if he decides he's not going to ordain? Then the people who who are expecting to come, they won't have time to change or so on. So, and we'd already told them that it was going to be a week later because we wanted to make sure that he wants to ordain. And then we realized, wait a minute, if we give him a week, he might he might really change his mind and he'll just keep doubting it more and more and more. And uh, then he just won't ordain in the end. Yeah, better. And and Palanyani gave a good example is that, well, in her case, when she was interested in it and then didn't ordain, and then years later she came back to it, and it could be years before he actually, you know, has this chance again. He may never have this chance again. Mm. If we give him that week, uh, too dangerous. So we were, at, and then Bhante Anoma was saying, "Come on, give the, the extra week will be good for him to get uh, used to it." Or, or, or be sure about it. And I said, mm, maybe for Sri Lankan people, but for Westerners, mm, you never know. So we decided that this is what we're going to do. If he ordains, he's going to ordain. Um, what, what did you ordain? Monday? Or was it Monday? No? He's going to ordain Monday. If he doesn't ordain Monday, he's not going to ordain. We'll do it like that. I think that's what we decided on. Yeah. And that was not the next day, but the day after. The day after. So then the next morning I went to see him. We had this beautiful sunny morning chat. Sunday, Sunday, sunny, sunny Sunday morning chat. And uh, I think, I don't know. Still, And so we was back and forth. And I was saying, I said, well, that's not a very good way to start. Your, that doesn't sound like the start of a, of a, a, set of a spiritual life. You have to be more sure than that. And then we talked about it some more and more. And I said, "Well, and, and it, it was interesting how it came out because it made me see something. But sometimes, and it was what I said to him in the end, is that sometimes you just have to take a, take the leap because he wasn't sure if he would take the leap. And I think that's good advice to anyone who's thinking about this this course. Don't don't sit there and, and waffle about it. Just if. If you're going to do it, do it. And when the time comes, take the leap, do it. And um, you know, get, get that over with. Too often, things that are worth doing don't get done because of hesitation. This is that famous saying, he who hesitates is lost forever. And you lose the opportunity. You only get an opportunity once. If an opportunity comes later, it's a different opportunity. That opportunity, it's always a one-time thing. When you have the chance to do something that you know is right, don't don't hesitate with it. You know, take the leap. And then the other thing that we were talking about is that you won't regret it. It's not like in this case you're doing something that you could possibly later on say, "Oh, I wasted my life sitting there in the forest when I could have been uh, could have been doing something much more." Well, because there's nothing else, and this is clear. So, you know, overcoming and, and suppressing those doubts and just going for it. And um, I guess w the corollary question that we have to ask is, how do you feel now? Did you, did, was it a mistake? Completely. <laughs> uh, I'm happy with it. I mean, yeah, the... The talk was definitely helpful because then it's like you're saying these problems that you're having, then 
it's just the other person being like, huh, yeah, well, this or that, and kind of making you just look at it, look at it better. And, yeah, I'm definitely happy with the decision. It's just, uh, yeah, it's the hesi the hesitation and such. Because then you hesitate about it, oh, I don't know, and then more doubt comes, then you start weaving more and more things. You just have to do it, and then you're you're happy with it. As soon as, we, you, as, soon as you made the decision, it was like, okay, well, we're in. <laughs> and then it was just a matter of part. Yeah, then it's just, then it becomes easy. So, yeah, I mean, it's good. It's better than anything else I could see myself doing. It reminds me of uh, when you had the question on education. You said, this is, this is the best school. That's what it makes me think of. I mean, it's really, it really is like the best thing that you can be doing. You just have time to, to meditate, to study. You just wear some robes, go walk around the village to get some food. And then you just have more time to do something that's actually useful for yourself instead of useful for continuing on all the various doings of the world.